First of all, what is Access? Well, Access is a database. Well, what is a database? A database is, in this case, Microsoft Access, which is a program where you can store and organize all your data into. For example, let's say I want to keep track of all the employees in my company. I want to be able to store their information, like their first name, last name, their date of birth, so I can send them a birthday card on their birthday. Also, their phone number, maybe their hourly rate or salary. All that information I can create and store. And for each employee that I have, it's going to be a record. So, for example, me, Kurt Kershaw. I have my first name, my last name in this database. Also, I'm going to have my home address, the hourly rate that I make. All that creates one record of information, one record for each employee. Okay, other things I can keep track of are like products. My company sells products. I want to keep track of it separately from the employees. Now, in Microsoft Access, to keep track of them separately, they have what are called tables. So this is a table of information all about the employees who work in my company. This is a table of information all about products. So the products will be, let's say, a product ID, the product name, how much I have on inventory or in stock, all about products. I also have orders. So every time a client makes an order, I want to keep track of the order. Maybe I have an order ID, also the date that the order was made. So in case if we have things like a warranty, and the client says, well, this product uh, didn't work for whatever reason. We can say, look, it's been over 90 days from the date that you purchased it, so it's no longer in the warranty. In other words, we can keep track of those things within the orders table. And then finally, we have the clients themselves. We have the company's name or the, the name, first name and last name of the client, their address, their shipping address, maybe their credit card information on file, things like that. Now, Microsoft Access is what is called a relational database. A relational database means that the, these tables can relate to each other. Let me put it to you this way. When you have a filing cabinet and you have information on your employees, your products, and maybe the orders they made and when they made it, and you're also the clients or the, those who purchase your products, do you dump them all in one filing cabinet or all into one folder? And let's say you want to pull just an employee up. That's really inefficient because, first of all, you have to lift this 20-pound folder out. And then, secondly, you have to sort through the products, your orders to get and find the employees. I mean, that's a waste of time. So in a relational database, for example, you create, again, what are called separate tables or separate folders. And what that means is that, for example, if I want to pull up the clients, that's easy to pull out. But if I want to pull up the clients and I want to keep track of all the products one client has purchased, like client XYZ, then what I want to do is I want to create, again, Microsoft being a relational database, a relationship between the products and the clients. So I can come over here and say, look, I want to extract some of this data. I want to find out for products, let's say we sell gummy bears. For all the gummy bears we sell, I want to find out all the clients who purchased that. And maybe I want to do some target marketing to those clients. So there's no way I could pull up products just by themselves and guess, well, who purchased gummy bears and then pull up clients by themselves and say, I wonder which client did it. But if I go ahead and create a relationship, again, Access being a relational database, then for every product that's purchased, it's going to be tied to the clients here. Not only that, but for every product that's purchased, it's through an order. We have the order ID, we have the date of the purchase, things like that. So we'll have the clients relate to the orders for every time they want to purchase a product because the orders are going to keep track of that, the date that they made the purchase. Again, breaking it down, I'm not going to pull all this information up. If I just want to find out how many orders a client has made, I'm just going to pull up these two tables. And they'll be accurate because they'll be relating to each other. So for every order a client has made, it'll show me the date that they made that order. And if I just want to keep track of how many orders they made, then I just need these two tables. I don't have to pull up the employees. That makes no sense. So it becomes really more efficient when you break it down into the smallest, most meaningful parts, or in this case, tables. All my orders are in one, all the products are in one, all the clients are in one, and so on. So you're really organizing your data and breaking them down, and then you're going to relate them or create relationships. So if you do need to pull related items, like the products to the clients, you can do so in a GIF. Now, Access is more than just tables of information. In fact, what makes Access so powerful is once you create your tables or your data in these tables is the ability to manipulate that data and pull in what you want when you want it. So, for example, I've got, let's say, 200 employees. I don't want to go through each employee's record and find out if the employee has benefits or doesn't have benefits. I want to be able to instantly create a query and pull up all the employees who don't. Just filter out those who have it and filter in those who don't. Let's say out of the 200, it automatically pulls up 25. I mean, that's fast, that's efficient, and that's what they call a query in Access. And then based on that query, I could create a report, print that off, and hand it over to HR and have them go ahead and contact those employees to be able to offer them benefits. 
Also, you can control how the information is being entered into your database, and in this case, into your tables. So, for example, if I hire on a new employee, I want to be able to have the first thing that they enter in is the employee ID, and then the employee's first name, last name. Just think of it this way. Have you ever done shopping over the web? You go onto a web page, you put in your first name, your last name, and they have the fields up at the top. Well, in Access, you can control where you place those fields and what fields come first. You can have the fields up at the top of your form, in the middle, over to the right-hand side. Again, instead of the first name being first, I would have the employee ID being first. Maybe the employee ID is a unique identification number. Maybe it's their social security number. But again, I can control the user's input of what needs to come first when it comes to entering in the records. In fact, let me go to the next slide in my PowerPoint presentation and break this down. Now, Access has what are called objects. And as we just learned in the previous slide, the foundation of all the objects are tables. Because let's face it, without a table of data, you don't have a database. So we got to have some data. And to store the data, we create a table. And we break the data down into its smallest, most meaningful parts. In this case, tables. For example, we had a table all based upon employees. You want to keep track of all our employees, keep that in a separate table. Keep track of all the clients in another table, like their first name, last name, their address, uh, shipping address, and so forth. Now, before I go any further, I strongly recommend that you actually watch Microsoft Excel 2007 training videos if you're not familiar with Excel, because Access has a lot of similarities to Excel, except that Excel is a little bit more simplistic and is a great introduction to Access's tables. For example, I'm going to go ahead and click on this link and open up a Microsoft Excel workbook and give you just a, an introduction into Access Tables. Because Access Tables and this Excel, what they call a spreadsheet here, are the same in that they have cells here. And these cells make up a spreadsheet, or in Access, they would make up a table. And you can see over to the left-hand side, I have a database here on my Dreamforce's payroll. And I'm keeping track of all my employees, their first name, last name, social security number. See, I've got all this information here, and so that makes up a database. And you could say, look, if I can create a database in Excel, why don't I use Excel? Well, you may want to use Excel to store your information, to keep track of it, because in Excel, you can actually do some sorting, like you can sort by last name. You can actually filter in those who have benefits, who don't have benefits, but on a very simplistic level, because Excel really wasn't meant to be the end-all of end-all databases. It's something to get started on. Also, Excel will perform functions and calculations. Like, for example, I have the hour for Max, his total hours he worked that week, how much he gets paid per hour. And then what I did is I multiplied both those cells to get his gross for that week. And those are the things that you're going to be learning and doing in Access. So, in other words, if you can come in here, learn about Excel, and feel comfortable with moving around in these cells and typing in information into the cells and performing calculations and being able to sort information in Excel, then you've got the grasp or the basics of how to work with tables in Microsoft Access. In fact, think of the Access database for small to mid-sized businesses. Well, what about large businesses? Like, let's say if you're a huge business like Bank of America and you've got thousands of employees and millions of clients, you want something a little bit more powerful and something like maybe Oracle. But when it comes to the hierarchical structure within Microsoft, Excel is, is the way to start learning about databases and how to perform calculations. Then Access is the next step up. For example, in Excel here, you can't print reports or design a report here, what you see is what you get. It's face value. So if that works better for you, then go ahead and stay with Excel. But if you want to continue with Access, again, I strongly recommend that you learn. At least watch the training videos, level one on Excel, and get the basics down and feel comfortable with it. So let me go ahead and close out of Excel, come back to our PowerPoint presentation, and finish our objects off. So once we have our data, our raw organized data, the tables, then we can go ahead and query out information from those tables. We can say, look, I want to see all the employees who don't have any benefits. That's what's called a query. And it instantly filters out those employees who do have benefits and only pulls in those who don't without having to scroll through, again, hundreds and hundreds of records. On top of a query, we have what are called forms and reports. Again, a form is something that you can create as a place where you can organize the fields and control how the user inputs data into the table because again, a table is where you're going to store all your data. So this is just basically a place where you can actually type in information that once you type it in, it dumps it right into the table. And forms, you can make them look really nice. Think of it like this way, like a report. A report is information you're taking from the table, but in an organized way, just as a form. is a way of entering information. Report is a way of pulling out information in a nice, organized manner. And then finally, I want to be able to define those objects a little bit more in detail. 